let's uh, let's take a moment here to center ourselves. Let close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and prepare your hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. And Carrie, we actually switched to where the assisting minister will do this part as well. Just the, the confession. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God, through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. 
the mystery of God's ways is sometimes hidden from the wise and intelligent. Jesus associates with those often excluded from the religious community. Like Paul, we struggle with our own selfish desires and seek God's mercy and forgiveness. We gather to be refreshed by Christ's invitation. Come to me, all you that are weary. Gathered around word, water, and meal, we find rest for our souls. Amen. Okay, this is for the children, but this also uh, applies to all the adults as well. In the second reading today, we're going to find out that people have always thought, sometimes I do what I don't want to do, or I do something that's not right. But I'm sure all of you children have done this. You know, there's a piece of candy over here, and your mom says, or dad says, that's it, you don't need that second piece of candy. Why? That, that's for somebody else. But what do you do? <laughs> you go ahead and take that piece of candy, even when you knew it was wrong. Well, <laughs> or something else happens. You know, you're not supposed to ride somebody else's bike. But you do it anyway. Now you knew that was wrong. But you did it anyway. Why is that? That's how we're built. I don't know why, but sometimes we do stupid things when we know better. But the good news is God forgives us. God says, oh, all right. Wake up, come on. Your parents do that all the time, right? Mom and dad, you do something stupid or you do something wrong. Do they hold it against you forever? No, come on. Mom and dad say, come on, grow up. Don't do something that's wrong. Do what's right. And God wants us to do the same thing. And God forgives us. That's the good news for today. See ya. The first reading is from Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Should we do a song for the day? V, if you're currently reading the psalm, you're still muted. Okay, how am I now? Now we can hear you. Okay. The refrain is, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your words. They shall tell of uh, all your work shall praise you, O Lord, 
and your faithful ones shall bless you. They speak, they shall tell the, of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your domination endures through over out all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all words and loving in all your words. The Lord upholds all those who fail and lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The second reading is from the seventh chapter of Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I do, when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. My friends, I invite you to open your ears and your hearts to hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please join me in a prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for this day you have blessed us with. Thank you for this online platform to gather us in community, and thank you for the people who are gathered here. Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon us. Send your Holy Spirit upon me, so that some word of mine may be some word of yours for someone who needs to hear it today. In Jesus' almighty life-giving name, amen. So I'm going to break from the last couple of weeks. As you know, I've 
preached from Romans the last few weeks, and today I want to talk about the gospel lesson. But the gospel lesson actually really does a good job of tying in with the last few lessons we've heard from Paul's letter to the Romans, and it ties in to Paul's uh, lesson today in, in Romans. And so I have lots of thoughts on this popular text in the gospel, so let's dig right in. Again, as I said, it's a very popular text. So we're just, I really just want to look at verses 28 and uh, through 30. Stop me if you've heard these words before. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I was talking with colleagues earlier this week as we gather about every Monday to, to talk about the upcoming texts. And, uh, you know, we were talking about how this text is a great tie-in to, to Romans 5 and Romans 6, talking about how the burden of law and sin are heavy, but, you know, the burden of grace is light. And one of my colleagues says, is it really, though? Is the burden of grace light? Because after receiving that grace, we have to extend that grace to people, and we have to offer it to people. And so the real question becomes, is extending grace, mercy, compassion, and forgiveness, are these things that are easy to do? Is this a light burden to bear? Well, the point my colleague was getting at initially, no, it's not. These are not easy things to do because if you have to extend mercy, grace, compassion, forgiveness to people, then those people have wronged you in some way at some point. And how good are we at, at uh, being good to the people who wronged us? We, we have a hard time with that. Um, it's, it's an easy idea, right? But it's a hard practice. But then as I thought about that, and I, I kind of let that marinate a little bit, I thought about that famous quote from St. Augustine, love God and do as you please. Now, people start, their, their minds start running, right? They're like, wait, what? Love God and do as you please? It seems unsettling at first. Love God and do whatever you want? Well, and love God and, and don't change at all? No, that's not what Augustine is saying here. You have to think a little bit deeper about that. Love God and do as you please. And so the point that's trying to be made and where I think it ties in with this text is, is that if you're going to love God, you're going to start living into the teachings that Jesus handed down to us. You're going to start living into that yoke of Jesus. And soon, with the help of the Holy Spirit, the things that you want to do will start becoming things that are pleasing to God. So if you love God and do as you please, the things that are going to be pleasing to you, ultimately, if you are living into these teachings of Jesus, are going to be things that are also pleasing to God. And so we find that today with Jesus's teaching or yoke that he is talking about. Now this yoke, this word yoke serves as like a double entendre, right? It's it's a literal image of, of a yoke that oxen have, you know, they wear across their necks that would help them plow the fields back then. But it's also a word that they used that was a particular school of thought. And so there were many popular rabbis and, and different rabbis had different lenses through which they viewed scripture, right? It would almost be like denominations, but they weren't different denominations. And so if you ascribed to this rabbi's school of thought, you were taking on that rabbi's yoke. And so Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. So to say, take my interpretation of scripture upon you, take my lens through which I view these things upon you. So to take Jesus's yoke and to learn from him, as the text says, means that we will become gentle and humble in heart like Jesus. And to revisit last week's sermon from Romans 6, we take that yoke upon us because we want to, not because we have to. Jesus invites us, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And so 
we start thinking about all these things and we say, well, what does this mean for us now? What does this teaching say to us? And I ask you, what are your heavy burdens? What are you carrying? What is weighing you down and making you weary? What's preventing you from taking up Jesus's easy yoke in learning how to be gentle and humble in heart. And so that reminded me of another quote. I'm big on quotes today. And this one comes from Martin Luther King Jr. Many of you have probably heard it before, but MLK said, I have decided to stick with love because hate is too great of a burden to bear. And we have to ask ourselves, is hate a heavy burden in our life? A hate for people that are different from you, uh, a hate for people who are in a different political party, a hate for people in a different socioeconomic status. Uh, is racism a burden in your life or prejudice or nationalism? Are these things that are weighing you down and making you weary? Are they preventing you from taking Jesus's easy yoke upon yourself? These, this yoke that is teachings of love, gentleness and a humbleness of heart a love a gentleness and a humbleness of heart for all people does that yoke start to sound a little heavier now do you want to carry jesus's yoke do you want to come to jesus with that heavy burden if you want to that yoke may be heavy at first but i promise you that the holy spirit will help lighten that load as you live into that gentleness and humble of heart. And that load and that yoke will be incredibly light as you live into the teachings of Jesus. In his name, amen.
gathered with the whole church, let us confess what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Carrie, are you going to do that? You know, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward a sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada celebrating their nationhood guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed including Frank Remington, David Legan, Ella Nagel, the family of Beverly Jones, Carrie Abner, Nick Butler, Kristen Crawford, the Trasso family, Sandy Led Lanford, Ray Grieving, Nancy Reno, Laura Chalmers, Lancy, Lindsay Bridges and family, Marshall Duguay, Gerald Manor, Terry Baumgartner, Steve Perizek, Mandy Kelly, Sally Hardy, V and Rusty Valerie, Scott Reno, Stevie Lakes, Janice Reddick, Pastor Ted Stoneberg, and Amy O'Neill. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And here other intercessions may be offered. Okay, we pray for all veterans and their families uh, with the 4th of July weekend, a lot of fireworks going on, going off. Small firecrackers and things are not a problem, but for those with post-traumatic stress, some of those big boomers are very, very scary. It sounds like incoming. So 
We pray for all veterans, all those who have served in combat. We pray they'll get over all their war wounds or whatever injuries or they've had, physical or psychological. We pray for their families. Look after all these people today, because we still have people serving. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith, including my family's friend, Vi Barlow. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we're joined with them in new life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to unmute yourself and share the peace with folks. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Weekend. Is the offering prayer next? Cool. God of goodness and growth. All creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are the signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. <laughs> All right, it's offering time again. Yay! Um, thank you everyone for being generous and for continuing to support the church. Um, I'm being generous and sharing my communion bread with my dog. And uh, just thank you everyone. Um, and if you can, you can give by dropping a check off at the church or mailing a check or going to lccmuncie.org. And there's a nice big button in the upper right that says give, and you are more than welcome to hit that. Um, so please share. And if you have stories of generosity that you would like to share, please do so. Or celebrations, right? We're sharing celebrations at this time. So if you have any celebrations to share, please uh, share those too. Well, <clears throat> I just have to uh, give a celebration for my brother, <clears throat> who is still four years older than me. <laughs> I don't catch up to him, and he can't go backwards, so, and that's fine. But anyway, he's doing well. And uh, also, I have a grandson who has a birthday next week, and he's going to be um, 10, I think it is. So, and then, uh, I don't know if any of you saw Hamilton. The New York cast and put on their play last night <clears throat> on Disney Plus Channel. It was outstanding and so much fun to, to watch. So those are my three celebrations. <laughs> I've got we something great at our son's um, birthday yesterday. He was a 4th of July baby. And we were lucky that they live right around the corner from us and we're in a quarantine bubble so that the whole family could be here to celebrate his birth and 45 years since. So we're thrilled about that.
I've got something. I quit vaping on Thursday. So I am celebrating that even though I'm not feeling the celebration yet. Well, you will. <laughs> I'm doing it. So congratulations. Keep it up. That's no easy trick, Laura. So good for you. Congratulations is right. Okay, well, why don't we transition to our time of communion. So if you have your communion elements, get those ready now. And for those of you who do not have any communion elements, take this time to reflect on uh, the last time you received communion or, or think about a particularly memorable, important time that you received communion. And remember that uh, whether it was one time or the last time, it is sufficient enough. This uh, ways of means and grace that God extends to us through physical means, we find it in water, we find it in bread, we find it in wine, because it is God who is present there for us and present for all of time. So we celebrate weekly, as we say, because it's a celebration and to be renewed and reminded of that. But just remember, one time is enough and and. You can focus on that now if you don't have your own elements. So, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we gladly lift our hearts to you in thanksgiving and praise, because you have hidden your story of salvation from the wise and intelligent and revealed it to infants. You have disclosed your mercy to the outcast Hagar, to the barren Sarah, to the shunned Rahab, to the childless Hannah, and to the unmarried Mary. In Jesus, you became a child for us, through whom we might discover the secrets of your glory. Again and again, you revealed your sacred purpose, through those your world despises, demeans, or ignores. Finally, you made your purpose known through your son, cursed by our sin as he hung on the cross. And so we rejoice with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, singing the song of your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Overflowing God, as you led your children to meet their destinies at the well, you became in Christ the well of life in that replenishes us, that we may never be thirsty again. Fill your church with your abundant grace, that it, it, that it may be a cup that runneth over with your mercy. Send your Holy Spirit upon this food and drink, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he gave it to each of his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to each of his disciples saying, take and drink. This cup is the covenant. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As we gather around the mystery of the Lord's supper, we remember that great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of the weary and heavy laden, God of the tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free, God of the homeless and the tempest tossed, bring rest to all who labor today. Set your gentle yoke upon them, for you are gentle and humble in heart. Be a shining golden light in the souls of all who struggle in body, mind, or spirit with demons within or without 
with fears about the future or regrets about the past. Through this communion with you, in union with Christ, in the power of your spirit, write on our hearts a new law that draws us to walk with you across the storms of suffering, the tremors of temptation, and the pangs of persecution. And on the last day, bring us home to you forever. And I will invite Carrie to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so to warn you, I don't have the contemporary version in front of me right now, so I'm going to have to do the version that I know. Please, however, join me in whichever version you prefer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the creator. Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Cody, you uh, you can play the sending hymn now. I think he's playing, but his mic isn't plugged in properly. Because he's not muted and he looks very into it. All right, Carrie, you want to hit him with the sending or the dismissal? Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. All right. Well, fellowship begins now. <laughs> if you stop recording. Ah, yes.